We have one more. Can person I add something, us. Jim, for for her? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Um, I do relate uh, with you. Um, when when this first started, it was very difficult to do um, day to day things at home with my wife and the kids. But if one thing that I can share with you that helped me was just to live by my values in that in that moment. Like I know who I am. I know what is right to do. And yeah, I may not feel so good at the moment. I understand what's going on, but I'm still going to love my children. I'm still going to be there for them and do the best I can. And for my wife as well and my family. Um, it's very important to me. For me, they're very important. So one thing that I, I told myself, I'm going to live by my values. You know, and I know my body will settle down in time. And I just, I just use that to call myself them. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I know, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. Um, you know, and then all these guilty emotions come in and, you know, but I'm like, no, you know, I'm, I, I, uh, you know, I, I serve the Lord and, and I trust in him. And I know that this is a process that I'm going through, but I will continue to do what is right. I like to piggyback yeah. on that too by saying in those moments we are taking rests and focusing on stress reduction, yeah, certainly contain those negative thoughts about ruminating, well, what can I do different? What's wrong with me? And how come I can't do this anymore? And maybe I should be doing this. And all those thoughts can just, you know, even though we're taking a break, all those thoughts just can keep stress going. Yeah. So yeah. in those stress reduction breaks, it's just like, okay, I'm focusing on stress reduction. That's it. I'm not going to question. I'm just going to get my stress down. Things will feel a lot different as my body recovers. Yeah, you know what I do sometimes? I, I lay down and I'm going to deep relax and I'm going to tell anxiety, okay, you do your thing. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to rest. <laughs> <laughs> just, That's a good idea, yeah. <laughs> just let it ride and I'm going to I'm gonna just rest. I, I make a decision to rest. And yeah. yeah, you can kick up the fuss and just bring these thoughts and I'm like, I'm going to be here relaxing. <laughs> Yeah. My mantra used to be stress reduction, rest, time. Yeah. Every time I'd get into that, just focus on that. And, you know, that's unfortunately, you hyper too, uh, too. Yeah. oh, good for you. Yeah. It's too bad hyperstatement yeah. takes so long to recover from. Oh, but my gosh. We keep focused. The body does recover and return to normal. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then I call back, um, you know, um, three months ago. Okay. I do. I did get better. So things are getting better. So I kept on telling myself things are getting better. I'm yeah. not feeling dizzy 20, 24 seven anymore. I'm not feeling uh, out of balance anymore. So it's, it's a, you know, my body's heading towards the right direction. Yeah, good for you. Good job, yeah. yeah. I'm curious about something. Mm -hmm. This dizziness, because it seems to be pretty rampant, as I know I have it 24 seven. Mm -hmm. Is this, I don't know, is is this like a a symptom that the body has picked up as its main symptom? Is that a possibility? It can. It depends on how each body responds to stress. Um, so some people dizziness is you know prevalent, like it was for me, and there's a lot of others who have that as well. Others have different symptoms, but it just depends on how your body reacts to stress. And it could be just how your body reacts to stress at that particular time. Because sometimes dizziness will leave and you're thinking, oh, great, this is good. And all of a sudden another symptom shows up. So, you know, if we can lump them all together, this is a symptom of stress and leave it at that, whichever shows up when. We just have to, again, focus on stress reduction and, and not getting excited about it. One of the biggest things that will derail our recovery is worrying about it day to day. It's like, oh, not another day. I have to go through this. And how am I going to manage yeah, this? And, yeah. and and of course, it's the, oh, what if this is, never goes away? It's the big one. Of course, that just triggers more stress response. I did all of those, but it doesn't help. So we just have to focus on stress reduction, tolerate the dizziness as it is, give the body time, and it does ease off and completely disappears. Yeah. Yeah, I just was curious because it seems to be um, the main symptom for me anyway. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, I'll have heart palpitations here and there and nausea, whatever. Um, those don't concern me for some reason. Yeah. It's the dizziness. It's the constant feeling like you're moving, you're off balance. 
And I wouldn't even say that's really even dizziness because it's not yeah. the spinning. It's not, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just seems to be the one prominent symptom. And I've paid attention to with the anxiety versus the stress. If I'm stressed, my whole body feels um, all of it. If I'm anxious, then let's say I'm going to go, I have to go do something I really don't want to do. Then I can feel the dizziness just like slam me all. It just like, bam. Yeah. You know, and it's like very, very intense. Then there's other times I'm not stressed or anxious. Or, well, I guess I'm not. Um, and it just comes out of nowhere. This yeah. just, whoa, everything's off balance. Everything's weird. And, and then I question it, is this really part of anxiety? Yeah. Because it's, I, it's hard to know. Yeah. I, I wanted yeah. to just jump in there because I believe that I relate to you in this symptom and mine actually went away. Does it feel like you're on a boat? Like, oh, yep. All it, the time. It, yeah. It, yeah uh, I too. will tell you that, that, yeah, that's anxiety. <laughs> it, yeah. I, yeah. It, I have the boat. It, mine the went floating. away. Uh, the yeah. floor moving. I have all of that. Trampling. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. Yeah. And it's, it can be, at, it can be low. It can be high right now. I'm um, tapering <laughs> off of clonazepam. <clears throat> so, and from what I'm understanding, because I was given this medication as a vestibular suppressant, um, not as an anxiety medication. Um, my vestibular system probably isn't completely compensated, although they think it is. Um, but dizziness can come from the taper process by itself. So it seems like my the dizziness is... It's a little different. It's I can't explain it. Um, plus I lost my brother in July. So that mm. really sent me into a massive overload that. of stress. Yeah. Um, that was just like, whoa, this didn't just happen. Um, so of course I'm, and, and I'm trying, and I just started the taper two weeks before the loss. Mm, so yeah, I yeah. stuck through the taper anyway, which I think kind of shocked my psychiatrist. Mm. Um, because I was, I'm bound and determined to get off this medication. I want this garbage out of my body. I think you might uh, find too that benzodiazepines actually cause dizziness. So I'm surprised it was prescribed to suppress it. Oh, wow. yeah. See, that was the thing was when I initially was, this was back in 2010. Um, and they told me it was BPBV. And then of course that they cleared up. Um, and then it just kept, you know, going. And then they said, no, you have vestibular migraine. I was like, I don't even know what that is. It's probably not even mm -hmm. something real. Um, it's real. I have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's horrible. Um, yeah. So then, of course, I did, you know, a lot of VRT and all that, to, you know, to help that. And they said, okay, you've compensated at this point. But what's happened is you've gone into um, chronic subjective dizziness at that time. That's what it was called, but it's at PPPD. Um, and I was like, okay. And they said and that's caused because of the anxiety that's come from the vestibular event. It's ramp ramped up your already existing anxiety disorder. So we're going to send you to psychiatry to put you on a medication to suppress the vestibular and some of the anxiety, blah, blah, blah. Well, six years later, guess what? Yeah. The dizziness got so much worse on the medication. The anxiety skyrocketed. The depression yeah. was off the charts. I was crying 24 hours. And to ask Janice, I mean, it was like, what is wrong with me? Yeah. And that's when I decided, you know what? I bet it's this medication because of the research that I had done on it. And I just, you know, I was like, I need to get off this medication. So now I'm, I feel like I'm in a, um, I don't even know how, what the word is. Almost like you're stuck 
because I'm afraid of the withdrawal from the medication, even though I'm so very slowly coming off of it. Um, but it's almost like I'm stuck in this constant anxious mode, but trying to pull down the stress at the same time. And it's like, how do I do both of these things and know that I'm okay when I don't feel okay, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, benzos are notorious for causing dizziness. And so, again, I'm surprised that that was prescribed for that reason. The Just on your comments, a lot of people come off benzos way too slow. They just prolong the agony. A lot of people come off before they have a dealt with their underlying factors. So it's, it's a recipe for bouncing back on again once you're off, if you do make it off. So my comment would be number one is make sure you have dealt with your underlying factors before you come off. It's absolutely imperative because if we don't, our anxious behaviors cranks everything up again and we're right back to where we started. Dealing with underlying okay. factors prepares us. Because that was another part of it is they say that the benzos, when you're taking the benzos, it can actually stop you from being able to work through the therapy because the benzo brain is different. It changes the thinking. Yeah, I disagree. So, yeah. and that was, that's my other thing. It's like, well, am I really ready to come off the benzo? Even though I want off the benzo, but then I, do, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back up on the dose right? and stay on it for another year or two or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to do kind of like all three at once almost Yeah, to get off the benzo, bring the stress down, bring the anxiety down even though it's making me kind of nuts. Um, but I don't mm. tell anybody that. Um, yeah. it, it, so I just, it's like, I don't, I don't want to go back on the benzo for another year. And because I don't, I honestly, I don't think that the benzo was doing anything for the anxiety. Because the anxiety right. started to ramp up, and then they were like, "Oh, we'll just we'll just add some more benzo." Well, no, yeah. I'm not taking more. I refuse to take more. Yeah. Well, just on your comments, you can do a lot of the underlying factor work while on the benzo because it's cognitive. It's thinking about behaviors and identifying what belief systems. Yeah, that's all. You can do all of that. Benzos really help the body relax. Essentially, it's like a tranquilizer, of course, right? So it's not going to affect how you think. You, you may not be as reactive and you may not be able to notice the degree of reaction to behaviors, but you still have. And so those will come out in therapy, no question about it. Reducing stress is good. Uh, you, lots of ways you can reduce stress. The problem with reducing stress on a benzo is that the body doesn't have the full ability to calm down. So exactly. you're always, yes, yeah, so you're always trying to get to maybe, you know, 20% of the effect. You can never get to the full effect. And that's mm -hmm. why coming off the benzo is helpful. But if a person comes off the benzo too early, well, then we're right back on it because our behaviors kick up stress again and away we go. And a lot of times the discontinuation process is difficult, which cranks up stress, which causes more symptoms. So dealing with our underlying factors, maybe stay where you are with benzo use, do the best you can at relaxation. And as you feel more confident in your underlying factor work, then you can slowly come off and discontinue and then you should be good. But well, that's the other thing kind of what I've done now is my last yeah. drop that I did. Yeah. The last decrease. I'm I decided to stay at that for a little bit, even though my psychiatrist is like, oh, we need to get this moving, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know what? Yeah. You're not the one going through this. Yeah. You're not the one living with the withdrawal and um the stress of my brother. And it's like I'm just gonna stay at this dose for a little while and let my system settle. Yeah. Now, keep in mind too that the dizziness is one of the most problematic symptoms for most people. When we did polls, that's the one that came up as being the most difficult to deal with. One of the reasons it's difficult to deal with is because dizziness can trigger the body's automatic stress response. Whenever the mm -hmm. body thinks it's losing its equilibrium, it's gonna kick in that stress response. So if we get a good you know, jolt of, of dizziness, the body's gonna kick in all by itself. Mm -hmm. No matter how contained we are, 
that's why we have to then get on the second fear and so on and so forth to contain and let the mm -hmm. body gear down. That's yeah, so that's, that's the challenge. The, that's what's so hard. That's the hard yeah. part the right there. Is right there. You, get, yep. you get hit and it's so instant and so fast that it's almost like you're the prefrontal cortex can't, it, it cannot catch up. It yeah. will take it. It could take it hours or days before it can catch up and say, okay, let's think rationally. And even yeah. with the benzo, unless it's Xanax, because that brings back the rational brain within 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I, I, I don't want to take Xanax because I just would have to take so much of it. Um, yeah. So, but at the same time, like you said, the, br the, the brain, because of the benzo, it's not able to use, let's say, all of its strength to gear down things. Right. Because yeah. it's, it's almost like in slow motion, I guess. Yeah. And then you get the dizziness from the benzo. Right. The dizziness from stress. You got two sources of, of dizziness mm -hmm. that yep. you have to contain and work through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's almost impossible because you're constantly feeling like you're off balance or yeah. floaty or whatever word you want to use at that moment. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the stress comes in and then the anger comes in and the frustration. And it's like, how in the world can I possibly get this to calm down if it's in a constant progression? Yeah, that's, that's kind challenge. of where I'm at now. It's like, how do I get this to calm down? So, you know, at night I cut everybody off at like eight o'clock, no phone calls, no, no nothing. I lay on my couch and I either watch a movie or maybe I'll, I'll try to read something just to have quiet. Yeah. Because it's very quiet at my house at night. Um, so it's like, okay, this, and I only work part time and you would think, okay, well, she only works part time. She has all this time to gear down, but I'm not gearing down because I'm constantly off balance in some way. Yeah. 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 You know, so it's like how, and then trying to come off this benzo, that's yeah. not helping, but nope. I don't want to increase the benzo and go back to the nor the dose I was on. Right. Then I have yeah. to start over and what's, what's, there's no point in that. Yeah. No, you can you can maintain a healthy balance. I'm not talking about you know positional balance, but in terms of life, uh, with a, still a low dose of benzo as long as you're working at your stress reduction. But I, again, I would suggest number uh, work on number uh, underlying factors. Number one, get those taken care of, and then slowly come off your benzo. Give your body time to adjust, and you should see your dizziness lift. My dizziness never left until I got rid of the benzo. I was really? Constantly, yeah. It was only when I got rid of the benzo because I wasn't dizzy free when I started, you know, coming off the benzo. I was still dizzy. That was still my lingering symptom. But it only disappeared when I focused on stress reduction after the benzo had cleared. Yeah. See, and that's the other thing because they say, yeah, you can come off the benzo and let's say it takes you six months to a year to get off the benzo. But then they, a lot of the horror stories are really yeah. horrifying um, that you could be in withdrawal for two years after you get off the thing, though. Yeah, so, that information isn't correct. I have to say I this. don't think so either. No. Uh, when um, Heather Ashton was around, we had a long conversation about this. And, you know, it was my experience that the reason people struggle after the benzo is because they haven't done their underlying factor work. So you stop the benzo, all of a sudden the behaviors are still there and it's not very long until their stress is up again and they're symptomatic. Or coming off the benzo is kind of traumatizing to the body so it cranks stress up, and if they don't have skills to get that stress down, guess what? That symptoms are going to persist because the body's still hyperstimulated and they haven't done anything to change it. Then you throw on the mix of uh, unaddressed underlying factors, and there you go. You can be there for a very long time. See, and that's what I believe. Yeah. that I truly believe that's where the problem is. So while I'm coming off the benzo, at the same time, I'm actively with my therapist working very hard mm -hmm. to stay focused on the behavior part of it and not yep. letting the thinking immediately, you know, send me into a, uh, a spiral. Yeah. Yeah. 
The good news is even though we have episodes of dizziness, like some people have a 24-7 like I did, it's just never left. And some people get to the place where you have a lot of cl cloudy breaks where you're feeling good and all of a sudden you get a wave of it. The key in all of this is, is to really, once that first fear fires, if it's a significant wave, is to contain and say, okay, well, settle down here. Uh, that's what it was. Don't have to keep on, you know, dwell it on this. The body's going to take a while to ease up. There's hormones. Gear down, just relax. If you shut those second fears off, we can still get through this and get rid of dizziness by reducing stress and containing that anxious behavior. That's yeah. kind of what I was thinking. I can, um, because on the benzo, I couldn't, my brain refused to believe that I was strong enough to do this. Yeah. It, it just was like, you can't, I can't do this. I can't, you know, I can't think, I, I can't concentrate, I can't do anything. Because I'm so afraid, first of the benzo, which I'd been, already been on, and then second of the dizziness. And what is the real cause of the dizziness? What's the real reason that I have it? It yeah. can't just be anxiety, but yeah. obviously it is. Yeah. Um, and I had to get to that place too, because, you know, the, the doctor gave me all kinds of diagnosis. And when I realized, okay, this has got to be anxiety, it's all it can be. And I'm going to focus just on that and not question and, you know, concern and check. And I just focus on stress reduction. And that's what got rid of it for me. So well, that's and I see what I'm doing now. Yeah. And I've worked with a lot of clients who dealt with dizziness. And I see the same experience over and over again. When you deal with your underlying factors and you reduce your stress and be patient, the dizziness clears off. So Okay. So, so old yeah. Patty over here needs to get some patience. <laughs> patience is, especially when the bend is in the mix. Because remember, benzo is going to cause dizziness. The other thing too is a, a very common thing that I see is when people start to work on their recovery strategies and their bodies do start to gear down, that's when dizziness becomes even worse because the stress hormones often will keep that dizziness at, at a certain level. As the body gears down, those stress hormones aren't keeping the body alert. So as the body starts to get tired and relaxed, that's when we get dizzy too. So a person has to persevere through that recovery time, recognizing, okay, my body's getting better. I'm feeling worse, but the dizziness is stronger, but I'm just going to keep working on my things, give my body time. And eventually the body comes out of it as it starts regaining its energy and stress hormones aren't as high normally. So that's another thing that I've seen. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, I was kind of curious about that because I know at night when I'm relaxing, I seem like I'm dizzier, even though I'm laying down. Like, why am yep. I dizzy? I'm laying down. I shouldn't be dizzy. Yep. You know, but that's just how it is. And it's like, well, it is it is what it is. It's not going to change until it's time for it to change, till the body has said, mm -hmm. okay, it's time. Yep. And Patty, so, Patty, yeah. stop telling yourself horror stories. <laughs> Your brain, you know, we tell our these horror stories to our brain. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, yeah. oh my God, am I going to be like this forever? You know, what what's going to happen? Am I going to be bedridden? Am I going to, you know, lose my family? Am I going to not be able to do anything? Am I just yeah. going to die? You know, I mean, these horror stories that we tell ourselves. Oh, and I our know. brains, Mine are our horrible. brains are not capable of knowing that they're just stories. When we say that to ourselves and imagine it, the brain really thinks it's happening or going to happen. So yes. it just automatically goes into, uh, you know, into protective survival mode, mode and, almost. Yeah. It's it's yep. and it's it's weird it's, that anxiety is a protective I mechanism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if it's oh, such really. a protective I'm mechanism, just on this call and it's almost like it's tea. going backwards. Or we oh, we'll go for a pokey walk. You know what I mean? Oh. It it's gets almost stuck. like you it's get almost stuck. like if it's the protective mechanism. No, we'll try. But at the same I'm just time, tea first. it's it's saying, okay, I'm protecting you by giving you these symptoms. Well, I don't need the damn symptoms. Just, yeah. just stop. And how can you run from dizziness? From, you can't, <laughs> if you really you were can't in even danger, run. Why would it use that, well, that freaking symptom? You know, like, yeah, I can really run right now from yeah, a bear. I can really, yeah, you can't, you can't run with dizziness. I'll end up <laughs> on my face, okay? Um, but Of course, you know, I, I, that happened to me was the whole ceiling fell on me, and I literally catapulted over the coffee table when it all fell on me and i remembered how did i do that i wasn't dizzy when i did that i was in panic mode that's why i went yeah. when i asked my first question was is it very possible 
because I had this dizziness before and then it stopped for three years. I had zero dizziness and then it came back. Is it because the, the body remembers it on its own? Um, and then the brain says, oh, no, this is this was a danger thing before, even though you've forgotten about it. But now it's picked it as its main symptom. This is going to be the one thing. I'd say no. The body's going to react no. to stress. Yeah, the body just reacts to stress the way it reacts to stress. Darn, yeah. I wanted you to say yes. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now, our fear, our fear response is there if we don't extinguish that fear. So the minute the dizziness shows up, we can react right away because the mm -hmm. brain has identified that as a threat. Mm -hmm. But we can extinguish that fear over the course of time, yeah. Which is but what it's I'm, the one that we, I'm but it's the one on. that we keep fueled all the time. That's it's why it's the right. main one. Because yes. it's the one that we hyper vigilant on that we're it's the main thing that our brain just, you know, won't let go of because we're not letting go of it. Yeah, it's like, it's we're, it's like we're stuck. It's like, okay, let, let's keep having this symptom so we can be anxious because you know what? That's the only thing we know how to do. We've been doing it for so long. Does that make sense? Well, Jim, well, even did you said something about, you know, whatever we focus on the most is what's going to, the brain's going to latch on to is the one we focus on the most. Well, well then how because, about if I focus on my fingernail hurts? <laughs> well, again, the symptoms will appear based on how the body manages stress. So it mm -hmm. doesn't really matter where your attention is. Now your attention is going to make a difference in terms of what messages you tell the brain about those symptoms. If you mm -hmm. say this is dangerous, it's going to remember that as being a threat, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, so, to me, it, to me, it's dangerous only because, to me, because my brain is black and white, there is no gray. Um, a symptom means something; it doesn't mean yeah. nothing. It, does Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. A yeah. symptom means something. Like if you have back pain for a month, there's something wrong. So if you have dizziness, there's something wrong. Oh, okay. Well, you have vestibular migraine. No, you know what? I kind of think you're wrong about that because that's episodic. That's not 24 seven. Right. Oh, yeah. well then instead you have PPBD. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you've come up with a different name for the same thing, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that yeah. make, I mean, it just, it's like, I, I don't that's know. part it's, health anxiety too. Like you have, Oh, I have horrible health, health anxiety. anxiety. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. why. Yeah. yeah. I have yeah. illness anxiety. Very bad. Um, you, but, you, yeah. But I'm trying to get, especially since my brother's death, I had to look at it realistically, not like I was looking at it for many years as being, it had to be a sickness that, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It had to be this, it had to be that, when yes, of course it was a sickness, but it was an unknown to the family. Um so I didn't have that. Thank goodness. I almost thank God for that, that because then now I would be like, Oh no, is my liver shutting down? Is my, is it my kidneys? What, which, which is it, you know, and going on and on and on and on and on because of the health anxiety. So I'm trying, see, I'm trying to remedy a lot of things yeah. at a lot of time. Are you working with one of our therapists? No, I was with Stacy for a while, mm -hmm. but then I couldn't afford him anymore. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have another therapist that I've been working with um, for I think almost a year, mm -hmm. and she um, she's also a, a teacher, mm. um, but she is a licensed psychologist, and she's trying to help me because she knows that I'm stuck with this illness, anxiety, and death, and misdiagnosis is yeah. what's keeping me there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, it's keeping me stuck. And she said, every time there's a death, it all comes flying back at you. Yeah. Well, yeah. this time I decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to try to work with the death differently. Yeah. I'm going to try to actually walk through it, step through it, feel it, emotions, madness, whatever it is. And that's what I've been doing. And she said, you're doing a great job at it. You prepared for the funeral, you prepared the eulogy. You did all these things. You're crying. You're mad. You're you're doing all all the emotions are coming about, and you're living through them. Yeah, you're not yeah. repressing them again. Yeah, I and I encourage think also dealing with your health anxiety is key here. 
Yeah. Yeah. Cause I had, I mean, any little symptom means something. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. My daughter will say, Oh, I have this, I feel like I have air between my ribs and I'm like, Oh, she could be yeah. having a pulmonary um, embolism. She could be having this, she could be having, and it's like, stop. Yeah, I know. That's why I always get on to you when you say things to me, and I go, "Patty, don't even, don't, 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 don't go there. I you'll know, spiral I'm me. Sorry you will spiral me. Don't even I go there. Do yeah. it. It's because yes. it's my brain automatically goes to these symptoms mean this, 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 and this, and and now I'm I'm having to stop myself. I'm having to say, okay, stop. The air bubble in in her ribs could be gas for crying out loud. Stop. Yeah, yeah. Pat, let me ask you: How did your parents respond to health issues? Oh, my Lord, my mother. I remember like in my early 20s, I would be I would say to her mom, you are going to literally worry yourself into the grave. Because it's all you do. I become my mother. Yeah. And that's where we. the, the one thing where, I didn't want to do. That's where we get a lot of our health anxiety from is how our parents reacted to health issues. Yeah, my dad yes, was and like now that. I mm -hmm. yes, and see now I've done it to my own kids, and that scares me. me the, the one thing I didn't want didn't want to become was my mother, and <laughs> oh my god, did I become my mother or what? Yeah. you yeah. know, and it's like, what are you going to do when you're let let's say eighty, laying on your deathbed, and look back and go, geez, I worried about all this crap happening, none of it happened, and I didn't even live my life. Yeah, I was a complete waste. There's That's a combination of combination of factors that usually set up health anxiety. One is what I just mentioned, where parents overreact to health issues. And number two is when parents are overly critical about your safety with comments like, see, you shouldn't have done that. That's what's going to happen to you. And so then yeah, you get well, to see, that my place. Mother, of, yeah, she was, she was there, but she worked all the time because she was married four separate times. Good God. Um, and so I was like the adult taking her three siblings. Right. And even to today, I am like the adult now taking care of two siblings. You know what I'm saying? So it was like yeah. at, at, at nine or six, I had to suddenly become mom. Yeah. 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 So I had no, mom. even though she tried, I can't say she didn't, um, but she just wasn't there enough. Yes, yeah, so he became over responsible you know. for other people. And yeah, right. So now I feel like I have to take care of everybody else and not yeah. myself. And it's like, wait a minute, your kids are grown and gone. And now all of a sudden, what you have anxiety and dizziness and this and yeah. that and the other, because why you, are you bored? You have nothing to do. Or yeah. is it because you've lived with this for nine years? Your brain doesn't know how to not be negative and not be um, worried. Yeah. And those are some of the underlying factors that would make a big difference for you. Unfortunately, Pat, I'm going to have to move on. Oh, okay. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Around. I'm sorry I yeah. took up everybody's time, oh, but thank you very no. much. Oh, you're, you're, you're more than welcome. Uh, uh,